Now we are pleased to welcome Augustine Chou, uh, who is part since 2017 of Huawei Global Public Sector Team, responsible for supporting government uh, on territories on their digital uh, transformation journey. Please introduce us to Huawei Wall for Cities and Territories and your vision of a national digital infrastructure. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Vincent, for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Augustine, and it's a great uh, honor and pleasure to be here today to talk a little bit about Huawei's uh, point of view around national digital infrastructures, uh, how it can be the foundation for smart green cities development. Uh, in the early, uh, probably around 2008, uh, what we see was it was very much application driven. Subsequently, there was a lot of talk and discussion around smart cities, and it was very, very much technology driven. We see the use of cloud computing, 3G, 4G, all these technologies being brought on board into the cities to make it smarter, to make it more efficient. Uh, as technology became more and more advanced uh, and data became more and more available, uh, there was a strong emphasis on how can we better use data how can we actually use the data that's been, that has been produced uh, and that has been gathered uh, every day to actually make services more people-centric? I think we are now at the age where we are really looking at digital transformation. Many governments are doing transformation right now. The emphasis really is how can I bring full data sharing to the whole of government at the same time I think everybody is very conscious of the fact that we need to actually use green infrastructures. We need to lower our carbon footprint. We need to make sure that we reduce, reuse, and recycle our various resources because uh, the earth that we are all a part of is actually depleting. And therefore, the emphasis has really moved into that space itself. So as we look at this uh, process of going green, uh, what Huawei has also done is we have looked at how national digital infrastructures become increasingly more important. Uh, all this means that you need a basic digital infrastructure as the foundation for cities to work. And these digital structure, uh, infrastructures are very important because they support your national strategies. Uh, by using them and by designing them properly, they can also enhance what we call governance capability to be able to actually manage better. And ultimately, the aim is to develop what we call inclusive digital services for each and every person, each and every citizen based on their profiles. Ultimately, the national digital infrastructures will allow you, allow the cities to capitalize on new technologies that are coming, such as AI, such as virtual reality, blockchain, et cetera, to make, and to, to make the platforms even smarter even more intelligent and to, develop, uh, to deliver even better services. So with this in mind, uh, Huawei has developed what is known as our Huawei Intelligent Twins framework. Uh, ultimately, we believe that at the, at the edge, at the sensor end, it's important to achieve what we call intelligent interaction so that the various sensors that you're using in the cities, whether it's a smoke detector, whether it's a sensor to detect Flats to detect winds, or uh, just a, just a sensor to actually sense the change in weather conditions. It's important to connect together, and the intelligent connectivity, the network that is actually connecting the sensors to allow them to to stream data to the to the intelligent operation centers within the cities. It could be in the form of four G, five G. It could be broadband, it could be microwave, uh, it could be Wi-Fi 6, it could be uh, using IoT networks. It's important to create the intelligent connectivity. Sitting on top of the intelligent connectivity, you have what is known as intelligent hub. This is where your public cloud, your hybrid cloud, or your cloud infrastructure sits, where your computing power, your storage power, uh, it's all uh, 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 sitting together so that on top of it, you can develop different types of applications for transport, for uh, energy, for education, for finance, or even for healthcare to actually allow the governments to be able to do what we call predictive operations, to bring on things like AR, augmented reality. Ultimately, it's about allowing you to do test bailing. 
as we look at some of these uh, business operations, uh, what Huawei has done is we are now shifting and we are now paying a lot of attention we do making sure that the networks that we design, the 5G networks that we design are green and low in carbon footprint. We are also making sure that the data centers that we put together are green, that uses less electricity, less water. As you can see from uh, the, the slide that I'm sharing, uh, what we have done is we make sure that, that we use solar power across all scenarios, as you can see on the left. Basically, what it basically means is that whether it's the pole that is being used to actually um, connect a sensor, the cabinet, uh, the site uh, where the sensor is being deployed, uh, the room itself, all of them are actually using solar power where possible. This allows us to save a lot of actually power. As you can see, we have a case study in Greece where we actually managed to save 50% power by making sure that a lot of all these uh, 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 products that we're using are actually solar powered uh, power to, to support the networks. As you can see, we have designed uh, some of our products to be able to fit into a single cabinet, make it smaller, make it more integrated, integrated so that instead of three cabinets, you only use one cabinet. Uh, instead of using multiple blades, uh, you are now only using one blade. And all this actually allows uh, uh, the the user to actually save electricity costs. Uh, as you can see in Shenzhen, uh, basically about 5,500 US dollars per site per year savings. This is what you can achieve by actually adopting products uh, with a more efficient power distribution. Uh, what we have also done is to make sure that uh, our highly integrated sites actually maximize and use electricity to its optimum without actually uh, losing well, what I would call uh, the energy itself. So whether, as you can see from a traditional uh, uh, indoor site, typically you need, need about, you are actually only operating at about 60% SE because some of the electricity is actually lost uh, to the environment itself. What we have done is that we have, uh, we have actually changed the design of our architecture. Uh, we have actually uh, designed our outdoor sites, our rooftop uh, sites, we have also changed some of our post scenarios based on our blade technology. And all this has allowed us to actually um, ensure at least 90% SAE across the different scenarios. That basically means that we've simplified active RF modules. We've simplified passive antenna, some of our technology, some of our investments into antenna technology. We are able to allow our sites to actually make use of electricity better without actually uh, losing um, uh, any, any losses. What we have also done is uh, we have also done intelligent supply, uh, power supply scheduling for maximum energy shortage. Uh, basically, what, what it basically means is that uh, we look at the, the electricity price across the different timings and because uh, the, usually the providers will charge uh, uh, at a different uh, pricing depending on the peak hours, etc. So basically, the, the, our system, our products, is our network is able to look at the pricing across the entire 24 hours and then look at what is the best time to do charging, discharging, etc. so as to actually make sure the costs are low. Uh, what we have also done is to uh, do what we call temperature control to maximize site energy efficiency. So basically, uh, the batteries, the BBU and transmission, you're looking at the different seasons, the outdoor temperature, the traffic, etc., to actually optimize when is the best time to actually use the different uh, networks. And ultimately, uh, with such an uh, approach, we are able to actually reduce the cost, reduce the amount of energy that is actually needed. So achieving what we call coordinated management using bits to actually manage what's. From the data center perspective, we, what we have basically done uh, is we look at where is possibly the best place to actually site your data center so as to achieve what we call low carbon footprint. And this allows uh, us to actually help clients to actually lower the total cost of operations and ensure high reliability. Uh, we, what we have done is we, we adopted the simulation to try and digital simulation to understand uh, the PoE costs so as to achieve greater PoE accuracy. Uh, a lot of our data centers are actually prefabricated with our factories. 
And then uh, this has allowed us to reduce the carbon footprint instead of constructing on site, which takes a lot of time, uh, which takes a lot of resources. We do it off site uh, in the factories uh, using what we call integrated uh, products. We actually do the construction off site and then we bring it to the site itself, reducing carbon footprint by about 50%. Uh, we also have uh, intelligent energy optimization. Again, this is based on our neural network algorithm, one of our key technologies. Uh, that is uh, allowing us to actually uh, uh, reduce the PoE across the needed. So basically what we can do is that we will achieve what we call efficient power supply. Uh, this is through our distributed architecture and our power module. We uh, can achieve what we call extreme cooling, cooling down the data center quickly so that it's not so warm, so it doesn't dissipate a lot of heat, uh, leading to a lower carbon footprint. This is through our free cooling, our liquid cooling, through our extended range cooling of uh, technologies. And ultimately, it's about uh, intelligence uh, consumption, making sure that we can actually consume less power to operate the data center. So uh, summarizing that, that basically means that the PoE has dropped from 1.35 to about 1.15. So if you look at a data center that has about 8,000 racks, right, you're actually saving about 7 million kilowatt hours per year. Uh, which actually equates to about a carbon saving of about five fifty five thousand tons, which uh, roughly is equivalent to actually three million trees. So with this in mind, with all these uh, green data centers, with all these green networks, our products have actually been deployed in various cities to enhance quality of life. For example, in Shanghai, Huangpu, they use uh, deploy our data center, they deploy our networks. So what they have done is they have a, uh, in, uh, intelligent operation center, an IOC, it allows them to manage public services, uh, to actually to manage the public management and, and operations. We have uh, various digital platforms, uh, big data platforms, uh, GIS platforms, AI platforms, and they have actually churned out and they have actually developed a lot of smart applications that are designed for the citizens to actually uh, use applications to obtain public services. All this supported by Huawei's very green uh, national digital infrastructures with low carbon footprints. Similarly, we are also seeing that that has also been successfully deployed in the Dubai in the Silicon Oasis, where it's, as you can see from some of the numbers, uh, using a mixture of smart lighting, uh, using a mixture of sewage treatment, and using a, a mixture of uh, applications and our products and our infrastructure, green infrastructures to actually support waste management. They are able to reduce their maintenance costs by about 42%. The energy levels have dropped by 35%. Uh, basically, the sewage treatment OPEX and their waste bin OPEXs, all these have dropped substantially over 50 to 60 percent. This has allowed the, 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 the OACs itself to be more sustainable, to be able to operate uh, at a lower, much lower carbon footprint. Finally, uh, in Germany, in Gersenkirchen, uh, which is basically a regional a city, uh, what they have also done is they have deployed Huawei's green products. Our, our portfolio mix in their networks, in their platforms, uh, they have, uh, in the IOTs, and they have de again developed a series of uh, applications to allow their citizens to access to the services, uh, the public services that the different uh, ministries and agencies have put onto the platforms itself. And they are able to actually centralize uh, a lot of the public services they are able to gather the data together to be able to do a lot of what we call big data analysis. And this has allowed them to deliver uh, innovative uh, service projects and improve uh, the quality of people's life. So uh, in, in summary, um, what I want to say is that uh, we see transformation in cities. Uh, we know that it's important to make sure that each of the city have got a very strong uh, digital infrastructure foundation. Uh, it's imperative that this digital foundation uh, has to be green, low in carbon footprint. So that's what I want to share uh, with uh, all of you today. And uh, I wish you a pleasant day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Augustine, uh, for your vision and for your time. Hope to see you soon in Singapore.